Welcome to Dave's Daily Crypto Take. Today is Tuesday, July 6, 2021. Let's take a look at today's prices. At number one, we got BTC at $34,617, up 1.33%. Ethereum at number two, $2,299, up 1.87%. Tether at number three at $1. Number four, Binance Coin, $313.17, up 4.92%. Cardano at number five, $1.45, up 2.58%. Dogecoin, number six, 24 cents, down 0.42%. XRP at number seven, 67 cents, down 0.26%. USD coin, number eight, 99 cents. Polkadot, number nine, $15.76, up 1.55%. And last, 10, Uniswap, $22.07, up 9.14%. Let's take a look at the crypto fear and greed index. Uh, when extreme fear can be a sign that investors are too worried, that could be a buying opportunity. And when investors are getting too greedy, that means the market is due for a correction. Uh, today is extreme fear at 20. Yesterday was fear at 29. Last week was extreme fear at 25. And last month was extreme fear at 17. So I just like to say thank you very much to everyone that's been subscribing, been liking, been sharing, and been supporting me throughout this whole time. Uh, again, this is Dave's Daily Crypto Take YouTube channel and podcast. You can check me out on Apple, Spotify, and also Google Podcasts. So please go ahead and please give a review if you can. That would help the channel and would help the views go up so more people can see and access these crypto news takes updates and news. So again, thank you so much. All right, let's move back to the table of contents. At the table of contents, we got Twitter. A local politician wrote a poem and a one a free um, NFT from Twitter. Hours later, she sold it for a life-changing $110,000. At number two, we got Germany opens up Crypto floodgates, special funds can hold $415 billion worth of crypto. At article number three, Michael Burry, Jeremy Grantham, and other top investors are predicting an epic market crash. Here are their gravest warnings so far. Article four, it's time to hodl Bitcoin because this is the guarantee you're getting now. Article five, Ethereum flipping happening now and it will get broader, Celsius CEO suggests. And the main topic for today is Russian hackers demand $70 million in cryptocurrency after ransomware attack. Wow, again. All right, let's take a look at Article 1. A politician, a local politician, wrote a poem and won a free NFT from Twitter. Hours later, she sold it for a life-changing $110,000. So uh, three main points for this. Twitter announced it would be giving away 140 NFTs featuring gifts nodding to Twitter culture. Two, Margaret Corvid from Plymouth, England, responded by tweeting a poem based on the giveaway. And three, she won the Reply Guy NFT and quickly received an offer of the equivalent of $110,000 for the gift. So on June 30, Twitter announced it would be giving away 140 free NFTs for 140 of you. Besties, in reference to this site's original 140 character limit, the NFTs or non fungible tokens representing digital collectibles users can buy, sell, and trade included nods to Twitter culture. Among them were animated GIFs titled Firstborn, a Tamagotchi like toy featuring Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey's first tweet, and building characters in which Twitter mascot Larry the Bird bicep curls its way to a 280 pound limit in reference to the current Twitter character count. NFTs have seen an astronomical rise in popularity and monetary value in the past year, with sales of digitally owned art selling for up to $69 million at auction houses like Christie's and Sotheby's. Margaret Corvid, a local politician from Plymouth, England, and self-described socialist writer, first learned about NFTs in March and has since written poetry for Ethereum Ether poems, an NFT project featuring 206 unique poems by nine poets. The group has a server on Discord, an app that hosts invite only online communities with chat, voice, and video functionality. That's where she first saw the NFT giveaway and quoted tweeted Twitter with an original poem. 
tweet, here within a note to Twitter from this humble ether poet, lifted racing heart, I feel litter, celebrating drops, I know it, seems a strange one, at Jack, knows best the art form to enshrine and haunt it. I hope that I pass the test because dear friends, I really want it. Hashtag NFT poem. So soon after, Twitter responded, we ran out of rhymes, but please check your DMs a few times. Within minutes, she received an NFT titled Reply Guy, a gift featuring a muscly marble statue egg for a head, sitting atop his throne, crafting the perfect, well, actually, that nobody asked for. I was like, holy bleep, Corvid told the insider. Corvid returned to her scheduled online meeting and during pockets of free time bragged about her rare acquisition in another Discord group. Some urged her not to sell Twitter's inaugural digital collectible, but an hour later, she checked her phone and saw a cryptocurrency bid for 50 Ethereum, which at the time amounted to roughly $110,000. I click on it and I'm like, expletive 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 she said corvid had consulted her friends and decided to take the offer seconds later there was hundred and ten thousand dollars in her metamask a virtual wallet corvid told insider it is such a blessing i was in the right place at the right time i did write the poem but it wasn't a contest or something twitter just decided to give me that and i was just really lucky to get the offer she said the money will be life-changing I'm disabled, so it's really important for me to be a wise steward of blessings like this. She told Insider, it's going to change my life because it means that I can fix things that are wrong with my house, and I could put this into both traditional and crypto savings. Corvid has already reinvested about 40000 of that money into a crypto punk, one of the first NFTs ever released on the Ethereum blockchain, as a symbol of the fact that I'm very committed to this space, she said. Despite making $110,000 in a single day, Corvid believes the NFT community isn't just about money. To her, it offers opportunities for inclusion. I really want women, people of color, people who have disabilities, trans folks, folks with mental health challenges, and folks who've been poor to have a voice in this space. She added, the best work and the most creative innovations are coming from people who live their lives on the margins, and that's so important. So there you guys have it. A local politician wrote a poem and won a free NFT from Twitter. Hours later, she sold it for a life-changing $110,000. Comment down below if you've ever dabbled with NFTs or if you've ever dabbled with writing poetry. Let me know what you think about this article. Article number two, Germany opens crypto floodgates. Special funds can hold $415 billion worth of crypto. So three main points of this article. Number one, new German crypto law aims to spur $415 billion worth of cryptocurrency investments in special funds. Two, special funds or special funds can now hold 20% in crypto assets. And number three, crypto-friendly policy will propel Germany as top European financial powerhouse. So German crypto law all set to bring in massive changes. The German parliament, Bundestag, just gave its approval to Fund Location Act that allows special funds to hold up to 20% of their portfolio in cryptocurrency assets. Special funds or special funds are premier German funds known for their large size and mass appeal. They can now hold 20% of their asset portfolio in cryptocurrencies, which currently amounts to approximately $415 billion. Germany, being Europe's economic and industrial powerhouse, will undoubtedly reap significant benefits courtesy of the new Fund Location Act. Major German funds now have the option to diversify their portfolio with BTC and more altcoins. So Germany's crypto-friendly legislation to benefit 4,000 special funds. The Fund Location Act was first bought in 2021 of April and subsequently passed in the Bundestag. Theoretically speaking, if each special fund prefers to be by 20% crypto, they would cumulatively amount to $415 billion worth of crypto purchase. Chief Executive Officer of Distributed Ledger Consulting, Sven Hildenbrat, cited the $415 billion estimate in a German newspaper. 
The fiscal implications of such a colossal cryptocurrency investment by large German institutional investors are massive, especially during the current stagnation phase in the crypto realm. Hildenbrandt believes that interest among special funds will explode going further. It could open up the floodgates of massive crypto investments in the nation. Of course, the first choice will be Bitcoin, followed by other crypto assets. So, damn huge. Crypto market readies itself for a German clean sweep. Special funds are a big thing in Germany. Currently, about 4,000 special funds represent roughly $2.2 trillion in value. In comparison, the United States does not have any equivalent to these German funds. Special funds are seen in high regard by German investors as they provide superior flexibility, high liquidity, fewer borrowing limitations, and asset diversification. The robust German regulatory framework is a cherry on the cake for investors. The new act has got a thumbs up from Germany's Bundesverband Alternative Investment, BAI. The agency has also advocated that similar laws be introduced for public funds as well. Such crypto-friendly policies are sure to enhance Germany's rank as Europe's financial hub. Hildenbrandt commented that it would give also a flip up to the local blockchain and cryptocurrency industry. So there you guys have it. Germany opens crypto floodgates. Special funds can hold $415 billion worth of crypto. Uh, I know that some of my podcast listeners are from Germany. Comment down below. And if you have a direct message, you could also send me a message commenting about your take on this German uh, opening the floodgates. And let me know if you think it's a good thing or if you think it's just something that they're going to do in the meantime. All right. All right. Let's keep on going to article number three. Famous person here, Michael Burry. Uh, Michael Burry, Jeremy, Jeremy Grantham, and other top investors are predicting an epic market crash. Here are the gravest warnings so far. So uh, four main points in this article are number one, Michael Burry, Jeremy Grantham, and other experts are predicting an epic market crash. Two, Jeremy Gonluck, Leon Cooperman, and Stanley uh, Drucken Miller expect a downward two. Three, here are the gravest warnings so far from eight top investors and commentators. So let's take a look. Michael Burry and Jeremy Brentham are bracing for a devastating crash across financial markets. They're far from the only experts to warn that rampant speculation fueled by government stimulus programs can't shore up asset prices forever. Billionaire investors Leon Cooperman, Stanley Drucken Miller, and Jer Jeffrey Goodenlack have also sounded an alarm. The same is true for Shark Tank stars Kevin O'Leary, market prophet Gary Schilling, and Rich Dad Poor Dad author Robert Kiyosaki. So here are the most striking warnings from these eight ex market experts. So Michael Burry described the state of markets in June as the greatest speculative bubble of all time in all things and warned that retail investors are buying into the hype around meme stocks and cryptocurrencies before the mother of all crashes. The investor of big short fame that runs Scion Asset Management points to Tesla, GameStop, Bitcoin, Dogecoin, Robinhood, and the red hot US housing market as signs of speculative excess earlier this year. Jeremy Grantham. Jeremy Grantham labeled the market a fully fledged epic bubble in January and described it as the real McCoy. When you have reached this level of obvious super enthusiasm, the bubble has always, without exception, broken in the next few months, not a few years. The legendary investor and GMO co founder continued We will have to live potentially, possibly, and the biggest loss of perceived value from all assets that we have ever seen, Grantham added. Leon Cooperman. So Leon Cooperman expressed deep concerns about financial markets in May. Everything I look at would suggest caution intermediate to long-term would be the rule of the day. The billionaire investor and Omega Advisors boss said, when this market has a reason to go down, it's going to go down so fast, your head's going to spin. However, Cooperman described himself as a fully invested bear because that factors that what typically cause bear markets, rising inflation, recession fears, a hostile Federal Reserve weren't present. Stanley Druckenmiller. Stanley Druckenmiller said in May, the current bull market reminds him of the dot-com boom, but he cautioned that asset prices could continue rising for a while. 
I have no doubt that we are in a raging mania in all assets. The billionaire investor and Duke Insect family office chief said, I also have no doubt that I don't have a clue when that's going to end. I knew we were in a raging mania in 99, but it kept going on. And if you had shorted the tech stocks in mid-99, you were out of business by the end of the year, Druckin Miller added. However, the investor indicated that he would pull his cash out of equities in a matter of months. I will be surprised if we're not out of stock market by the end of the year, just because the bubbles can't last that long, he said. Jeffrey Gunlack. So equities are undeniably expensive, Jeffrey Gunlack said in March, claiming the stock market was anything other than an overvalued versus history is just to be ignorant of all the metrics of valuation. The billionaire investor and double line capital boss said he warned that stocks would fall by upwards of 15% when the downturn comes. Gunlock, whose name is the Bond King, predicted that retail investors that have piled into meme stocks and other speculative assets wouldn't stick around once prices started dropping. We'll have a tremendous unwind of a lot of the money that thinks that the stock market is a one-way thing, he said. Kevin O'Leary. Kevin O'Leary warned in April that stocks would eventually crumble, but he framed the downturn as an educational opportunity for rookie investors. Buying the dip is more rock and roll, but what invariably happens is you go through a massive correction and you learn a very important lesson, the Shark Tank star and O'Leary Funds chief said. The generation that is trading right now has never gone through a sustained correction. It's coming. I don't know when, I don't know what will trigger it, but they will learn their lesson, he continued. If you have a lot of leverage on, it's a hell of a lot of a lesson because you end up in a negative net worth position, O'Leary added, but you do learn from it. Robert Kiyosaki. Robert Kiyosaki is expecting the greatest market crash ever, the Rich Dad Poor Dad author tweeted in June. The biggest bubble in world history getting bigger. The personal finance guru said, biggest crash in world history coming. Kiyosaki has blamed the Federal Reserve for overstimulating markets and devaluing the dollar. He's advised investors to prepare for the downturn by stocking up on precious metals and cryptocurrencies. Are you ready? He tweeted in April. Boom, bust, mania, crash, depression. Mania in markets today. Prepare for biggest crash, depression in world history. What will the Fed do? Print more money, save more gold, silver, Bitcoin. Gary Schilling. So Gary Schilling warned in April that financial markets would nosedive, but he declined to a hazard at guess at when the crash would arrive. I'm not making any firm prediction as to when this thing is going to happen to collapse. The veteran forecaster and president of A. Gary Schilling and Co. said, speculations outrun any logic, and that's probably going to be true of this one. Schilling continued, but at, at some time, at some point, boy, there's going to be a lot of blood on the floor. So there you guys have it. We can see all of these, Michael Burry, Jeremy Grantham, and other top investors are predicting an epic market crash. Here are their gravest warnings so far. Comment down below, which uh, top investor do you follow? Have you ever followed Robert Kiyosaki, Kevin O'Leary, Michael Burry, or so on? Comment down below and let me know if you think their takes are true or false. Okay. Before we move on, I just want to say thank you so much for everyone that's been listening so far into the podcast and YouTube video. Uh, I just want to say thank you and please do what you can to support me by liking, sharing, and subscribing. I don't have any affiliates or sponsorship because I'd like to keep this channel unbiased so that everyone can get a true take, a true news, a true update on everything crypto, whether it's on blockchain, Bitcoin, or fiat. So again, please like, share, and subscribe so that more listeners can have a take on Dave's daily crypto take. All right, let's move on to article four. It's time to hodl Bitcoin because this is the guarantee you're getting now. So Bitcoin's price has been moving sideways for more than a month now. Nonetheless, the all-persuasive and pervasive volatility has been making its presence felt in the otherwise monotonous market. Bitcoin at the time of writing was trading in at 35K price bracket after recording a mere 2.32% surge over the past day. Bitcoin's dampening state has notably become the elephant in the room. 
The general sentiment of market participants at this stage is typically characterized by fear. However, the Bitcoin market has encountered such situations before and has successfully managed to overcome them. Commenting on similar lines recently, Heisenberg's Capital's co-founder and Bitcoin proponent Max Kaiser said, quote, We've been doing this for 10 years. We've had 15 of these corrections over the past 12 years, and the current one is an average one. Nothing special. Hodling is always difficult, especially when selling pressure mounts up during town turns. And however, BTC has fetched 287.93% returns over the past year. And volatility is a factor that investors accept as a trade-off to the hefty returns received, Kaiser added. Hodling Bitcoin is volatile but you're guaranteed to increase purchasing power. Guaranteed. A word you rarely see in the investment world, but I can, in this sense, tell you that you have a guaranteed rise in purchasing power. Doubling down on this year-end, big and bold $220,000 forecast Kaiser asserted, I saw the same thing in 2013. And again, in another period where you had a 5, 6, 7x move in a compressed amount of time. So I still have that target. The fundamentals that apply to BTC are only getting stronger. Kaiser further asserted that fiat money at this stage was on the back foot, and that was a victory for Bitcoin. With respect to giving up his hodlings, Kaiser said, I don't see a situation where I would recirculate BTC into the fiat money world because I don't want to give fiat money any power. I don't want to give politicians who run fiat money any power. I'm trying to starve them to death. The PDC promoted further added that governments all over the world shouldn't be wasting their time trying to monkey around with monetary policies. He added, just outsource your monetary policy to BTC and work on something else. What's more, he stated that the bureaucrats were making horrible decisions based on horrible feedback received. Kaiser added, quote, at this point, there's no difference between the United States and the Soviet Union in terms of monetary policy. The governments are run by kleptocrats and geriatric senile old idiots, and they're just going to die on the vine. The exec further emphasized that countries whose GDP was tumbling could adopt the BTC standard and take advantage of it. After praising El Salvador for its bold move, Kaiser underlined that China was getting out of the BTC business at the wrong time. Kaiser further asserted that BTC would witness a hockey stick pattern on the charts this year and concluded by stating that BTC was on sale. So it's time to huddle Bitcoin because this is the guarantee you're getting now, said Max Kaiser. Comment down below if you agree with him and if you are a hodler as well. Article number five, Ethereum. Ethereum flipping happening now, and it will get broader, Celsius CEO suggests. So the Ethereum flipping of Bitcoin has occurred in terms of dollars, according to Celsius Network CEO Alex Mashinsky. When asked about Kitco News presenter David Lin about the likelihood of Ethereum exceeding Bitcoin in market valuation, Mashinsky said, quote, Ethereum already surpassed Bitcoin in dollar terms, as shown in the total holding of the Celsius community. And I think that the broader market will follow in the next year or two. You will see that flipping happening in the broader market. Celsius Network's million users. Mashinsky revealed that when he makes his predictions, I take a look at the Celsius figures and listen to what the hodler community at Celsius is telling me every day. Namely, the CEO of Celsius Networks measures his predictions by how much in dollars a million people hold on the Celsius network and whether they have more in Bitcoin or more in Ethereum. He expressed, quote, Ethereum surpassed Bitcoin in the last month or two. The first time that our million users had more than Bitcoin, $17 billion in deposits, the total was held in dollar terms in Ethereum. Mashinsky discussed the use case of Bitcoin is if it's store of value. In contrast, the use case of Ethereum is yield, and yield, in his opinion, as an application has a broader use base with more people vying for yield than those who seek to more value from fiat to Bitcoin. Greater ETH adoption in the future. In the view of Celsius CEO, you will see broader adoption of Ethereum over Bitcoin. However, both of them are unique applications and blockchains that will both experience greater adoption in the future. One will surpass the other. Generally, 
Mashinsky believes Layer 2 solutions solved ETH's problems near term. Still, ETH 2.0 will be a significant and incremental improvement down the road, enabling both solutions to work in tandem. Over the weekend, Ethereum went beyond the $2,300 barrier for the first time since mid-June, following significant capital outflows last month. Hence, Ether is anticipated to gain further traction as the EIP-1559 blockchain update approaches. Ethereum's eclipse of Bitcoin in total daily active addresses may indicate that Bitcoin is losing its status as the world's leading cryptocurrency. Nevertheless, BTC remains its market dominance of 44.85%, whereas ETH has a market dominance of 18.3%, according to CoinMarketCap.com. So there you guys have it. Ethereum filpening happening now, and it will get broader, Celsius CEO suggests. Comment down below if you think Ethereum is going to flip Bitcoin this year, because it seems that Bitcoin's getting stronger and stronger, but Ethereum with its new EIP update, do you think it's going to happen and the flipping will happen this year or in the next? Let me know and comment down below. All right, let's move on to our main topic today. It is Russian hackers demand $70 million in cryptocurrency after ransomware attack. Wow, another cryptocurrency ransom attack. A Russia-based group behind a global ransom attack affecting thousands of businesses demanded late Sunday that $70 million be paid in cryptocurrency in return for providing a software key to unscramble the encrypted information on affected companies' machines. On Friday, Reveal, the same group that succeeded in extorting $11 million from JBS Foods after breaching its network security late May, infected the network of Miami-based information technology IT company, Kasea, a firm that provides IT services to thousands of customers, and the ransomware began spreading exponentially from there. Other firms that provide services to outside clients were also used to spread the malicious software. Initially, Reevil was asking companies to pay ransoms of as much as $5 million, but the criminal group changed its strategy, announcing via the dark web that it would offer a universal key for all victims of the attack in return for a $70 million payment. Although it is not known what company, group of companies, or other entity would actually pay that amount. In a statement, the FBI, which is investigating the massive ransomware attack, advised all affected companies to follow the guidance issued by CASEA and the U.S. Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, CISA. Yesterday, President Biden directed the full resources of the government to investigate this incident. Deputy National Security Advisor for Cyber and Emerging Technology, Ann Neuberger, said in a separate statement urging anyone who believes their systems have been compromised in a Cassia uh, ransomware in this incident to immediately report to the Internet Crime Compliance Center. He clarified he had not called Russian President Vladimir Putin over attack. Biden was presumably referring to comments he made after a meeting with Putin in Switzerland last month. On Saturday, U.S. President Joe Biden said he directed the full resources of the government to address the attack. And if Russia was involved, then I told Putin he, we will respond. So what do you guys think about the Russian hackers demanding $70 million in cryptocurrency after ransomware attack? Are you tired of all these ransomware attacks? Uh, trying to, you know have a bad look and a bad image on cryptocurrency comment down below if you think that's going to happen or not all right let's finish up today's crypto take with the prices one more time so at number one we got btc at thirty four thousand six hundred and seventy five dollars ethereum two thousand three hundred and thirteen dollars tether one dollar binance coin three hundred and fourteen dollars fifty six cents cardano $1.45, Dogecoin, $0.24, cents. XRP, $0.67, cents. USD coin, $1, Polkadot at $15.75, and last but not least, Uniswap at $22.19. So there you guys have it. Thanks again for making it this far into the podcast and YouTube channel. Uh, again, this is Dave's Daily Crypto Take. Please like, share, and subscribe. Do what you can to support me and 
please let your friends, family know about these news channels on Apple, Spotify, or Google Podcasts. Again, have a good crypto day, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.